The call will be recorded. Hello everyone, it's Jennifer Nicole Lee and welcome to the JNL show where you're going to get a jolt of JNL, you're going to get a mega dose of motivation and inspiration. I'm really excited about today's guest. She's not only a guest, she is one of my nearest and dearest VIP fitness friends. We go way back. I've been honored to meet her in New York City when I hosted my New York City one day mega event at my fitness model factory. She is not only an amazing mom and woman, a dedicated wife, but she's a beautiful woman that just embodies the spirit to never give up. She actually is a contributing author in the best-selling book, When You're Stuck in a Rut and Need a Motivational Kick in the Butt. And her story is amazing. She actually wrote a whole chapter on her story, chapter 13, Running to Remember. So with that being said, we're going to bring on Candy Nicole Taylor. She is sweet but sugar-free. How are you doing today, Candy? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you, Jennifer. Great. I'm going to dive right in. You have such an amazing story. I've read it. I love it. But to all of our listeners out there, what would you like them to know about your story? And maybe you can give us a step-by-step -step play on really what happened in your story. It's so motivational. Well, it started pretty much with a headache, and I was probably about 30 years old, maybe not even 30 years old. Yes. I had had two children, I was married, yes. and I had a lot of stuff going on in my life. I, I was never really involved in fitness. I never dreamed that I would ever be in fitness. I was just a house mom. I right. was taking care of my children. I wasn't feeling very well. Mm -hmm. I had a headache. Yes. and they had kept continuing to come back and it was shortly after my second child was born mm -hmm. i knew something needed to change in me i kept hearing this voice in me telling me something needed to change but i couldn't figure out what i needed to do to change my life i was not happy with right. anything that was going on in my life i wasn't happy with where we lived yes. i was happy in my marriage it just yes. everything was just in a downward spiral for me yes i needed to change and I know that these headaches were coming along and they kept continuing to come along. And one day it was just a really bad headache and the next wow. day I woke up in the hospital. Oh my goodness. It was, I don't even remember what happened when I woke up in the hospital. Oh my I goodness. didn't know who I was. I didn't know what was going on around me. I was very scared. Oh my I goodness. didn't know my parents. I didn't know what was going on in my life. I didn't know who, what, where, or anything that was going on. So you mean to tell me, so, you go from just, you know, having a lot of women go through the stress, the anxiety, and then you have these headaches. And then all of a sudden yes. you wake up in the hospital, not knowing who your parents are, not even knowing who your husband was. And from in your story, it's so motivational. It's weaved in with you know, quotes from the Bible, you're a God-fearing woman, you're very spiritual, and I love that your faith has really been strengthened through the situation, but it's so scary to be able to wake up in the hospital, almost like in a comatose state, and you didn't even know how to take care of yourself. Tell no. us how that felt. Was it scary? Was it like, what's going on? Who are these yeah. people? It was very scary. I didn't know how to feed myself. I didn't know how to comb my hair. I didn't mm -hmm. know what clothes were for. I, I pretty much was a, a grown infant. I, wow. I didn't know how to do anything. Oh I, I didn't know goodness. what a fork was, a spoon was, it, nothing. So now, my parents- right, Is that a medical term? Is that called, you have you had adult amnesia, correct? Dementia. Yeah. Dementia. dementia. Mm -hmm where I, I didn't know anything that was going on. And my parents, they told my parents that I was going to have to live in an assisted facility oh. for the rest of my life, that I would never recover and that I would need assisted care and I needed to be put in a home. Oh my goodness. No one would ever looking at you so beautiful, so vibrant, your videos on Facebook, your social media presence, your vibrant, just colorful, over the top personality that you actually had to go through such a horrible dark valley in your life at 30 years young having dementia that's something that senior citizens have or people and you just became like an invalid not being able to brush your hair brush your teeth take care of yourself and tell me about your parents and your support team and how long were you in the hospital in that state 
I don't even recall how long I was in there because it was numerous times that I had to be in different locations uh, for them taking care of me. Wow. Uh, as far as my parents, they did not want to put me in an assisted living facility. They wanted to take care of me yes. and they just refused to give up on me. Yes. And they're angels. And I just want to mention this in this uh, in the show portion that I'm so grateful for your parents because they never gave up on you. And mm -hmm. they did something very important. They brought some reading materials to you. They brought some magazines to you. They brought yes. some things for you to kind of just look at. And tell me yes. about that because this part of the story really touches me. And I want all of our listeners to understand the power of connection that just goes yes. beyond words. The energy that you project maybe in a photo or in everyday life. Tell us about that moment. And I think it was a turning moment in your recovery that helped yes. transition to get you up and out of that situation. It did. I uh, was in the hospital and they would bring me like different magazines. And then of course my mom and my dad would tell me like different things that were in the book to try and help me recall some things to hope that I would get better. Yes. And uh, some of the books that they had brought <clears throat> were fitness books that I had at my home or my yes. husband's had brought in as well. So they, my husband brought my Bible and Aww. brought some other magazines to me and I would, you know, try, I couldn't read. I, I didn't know yes. how to do anything. So I was trying to see if I could, my parents were trying to see if I could read or if I could recognize anything or even recall anything that was in any of these books or pictures. And one of the ones that I had seen was you on the cover oh. of one of the magazines. And you, it was just, I just kept looking at you. I didn't know who you were, but oh of course I was just drawn to you oh. and you, just how healthy you looked Thank and you God. just how radiant you looked. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to find out more about you, but I didn't know how. So I would, you know, flip through the books and I kept that, that magazine. And later as I was getting better, I would, they, my parents would take me to the park and, you know, of course yes. I was walking and I would start doing things that I had seen you do and other people oh. do in the book. And I, I wow. wanted to just, be like you and oh. to, to try and be healthier, you know, to, Thank to feel God. good. And you connected was, with that energy. It's that energy yes. of that health, optimal health. And I'm just so touched that that moved you to get up. And, and I remember in your story, you talked about how your parents brought you to the park to give you fresh yes. air. And you just all of a sudden just started running and you just started running. And, the, and it's almost like the more you ran, the more your memory came back. It did, and when I did start running during those days, uh, I would start like remembering stuff. I would remember. Wow. Just felt in my somewhere bad, of course, and it was just so surreal to be able to have it. It was like being whispered to me as I was running. Yes. And I would just break down and cry sometimes, and sometimes oh. I would be overjoyed with happiness, and and I would start. I was able to do things better. I was able to to read more. I was able to to you know take care of myself and yes, put makeup on and do my hair and you know feel like a woman. Yes, and it was it was really a difficult road, but I'm very grateful because I did start finding you and looking for more information about you and and how you radiate your health and and so it was I, I looked for you and then. I couldn't find you on social media at all because uh -huh. I, I just wasn't really good at social media. My kids would help me, you know, do certain things on online and stuff. Uh -huh. But again, I had found, I had, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I took a subscription to the magazine and I was waiting, you know, not thinking I would ever see you again. Right. And again, I saw you again on the cover of, of another Oxygen <laughs> magazine. Thank you God. And Thank I was you like, God. this is the lady that oh. I you know, been trying to figure out who she is. And I was so excited. I ripped open the, the magazine and I was like, who is this lady? And I just kept reading about you. And, and I was just so happy that I could even just read about you and to see what you were doing and, and to see how you helped me in my life and, and to get better. It was just, I just wanted wow. to do more. And, and so then I finally started looking up more, getting, getting better in social media and of yes. course, taking care of myself. And my parents and my husband, I was finally able to go back to my husband's location because I wasn't living with my husband. Yes. I actually stayed with my parents because I yes. wasn't, I didn't know who he was 
Right. And so my kids, my husband wouldn't tell my children what had happened because he didn't think that he did not want them to see their mom. He didn't want right. them to see me like that. Right. I was just so bad. I couldn't do anything. Oh, yes. I didn't live with them for a while. I lived with my parents. And this whole time that I was living with my parents, oh. you know, of course, they would take care of me and, and do uh, certain things. But it, it was a very difficult road being without anyone, but being able to remember and to recall everything because of the exercise and fitness. And yes. I know that it is very important that a lot of people think, you know, fitness and exercise, a lot of people think it's really, in, you know, vanity sort of thing. Right. It's not at all. The, the reason that I am in fitness is because of my health and my well-being. Yes. And I wanted to add to that. I love that you mentioned that, Candy. And your story is so inspirational. And you are a living example and testimony that fitness goes way beyond, like you said, the superficial vanity of wanting to look good, eat this many calories, do this workout, you'll be happy. It's a healing mechanism. And I believe in my spirit, reading your amazing story, that you just from running, the up and down movement, the releasing of the hormones, the serotonin, the breathing, that is truly really healed you and that fitness and wellness is a healing mechanism and your story is so beautiful and then so you're you're convalescing you're getting better back to you know you bounce back through just believing in yourself and i'm so grateful to god that that message was put in front of you and that i was on that magazine at that right time and that you're here now and then fast forward you live in florida i live in florida i'm hosting this new york city one day fitness model factory one day mega event and here this beautiful strawberry blonde gorgeous woman walks in and you introduce yourself and we met and your story absolutely just dropped my draw my jaw and that was a couple years back but i remember you had told me about your story and i just it's something like it's just been branded in my spirit just like singed into my spirit it's hard to forget and it's unforgettable your story could be really like a movie, a blockbuster movie about a woman who loses her memory when she's 30 and then she heals herself through fitness. So everyone out there, what would you like to tell our viewers and our listeners about your story and helping them to never give up in their darkest times? I think really whenever you are at that point where you don't think that anything else is going to work, that you don't know what's happening in your life and you feel like you're just going in that downward spiral, you don't yes. you don't know what you're going to do or how you're going to get through it but just you have to think positive and yes. to always know that some something or e either it can be an angel or maybe it pe could be the good lord above but yes. there's always something out there that's going to be better it's not going to be a dark day all the time absolutely it's not. i'm going to read from your chapter in closing you say I will continue to move forward. I will always look for the positive in any situation, no matter how difficult. I see my life as a way to inspire others and to be a light of hope. I found a new meaning and appreciation for the small things in life. I am into fitness, not for vanity by any means. I'm into fitness for my mind, health, and happiness. It is my hope that I will not have to face dementia again in my old age. For dealing with dementia the first time was difficult enough. I promised myself I would make every moment count while I could and remember along the way the most incredible memories. I know a small fraction of my life will forever be in this book, and I hope to inspire countless others. And you say this in closing, find your joy every day. It can and will transform your mind and life. Make every moment count. Candy Nicole Taylor. OMG. Woo! Your story is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. So thank you so much for your story. And I have a couple more questions here for you. I'm actually gonna um, ask you, what is your most pivotal moment to pursue your journey in fitness? What was that for you? Well, I would say that <clears throat> it was a day that was, a, a day that it's hard to say because yes. it was a very difficult day. Yes. I was in my old house and yes. I wasn't happy with anything that was going on in my life. Mm -hmm. I had just shortly given birth to my second child. I was a very negative person. Yes. I had continued to request change for my husband and yes. I kept asking him, you know, I want to move. I don't want to be here anymore. And it was, you know, the location, everything was just 
not there for me. I had found yes. you know, a little bit of betrayal mm -hmm. and I was, I still had stitches or staples in my stomach. Oh, oh, cause and, you had a cesarean. Yes. Oh and boy. That's how, how fresh it was. Oh. And I was going up the stairs in our two story home and I collapsed. Oh. And when I collapsed, like the, the staples had came out of my stomach and I was just laying there on these stairs and I was just devastated. I was yes. you know, heartbroken yes. and just oh. didn't know what I was going to do. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why am I raising my children here still? Yes. You know, I, I want to change and I, I, I can't, my, you know, he's not, he doesn't want to move. And I, yes. I was just so depressed and yes. I don't know if it was from all the hormones from just giving yeah. birth, you know, how much hormones go through a woman's body. Yes. And I was like, at that moment, laying on those stairs, I knew something had to change when yes. I was laying there, I kept hearing in, inside something has to change. It has yes. to, and I'm crying, I'm sobbing. And oh. I knew right then and there that it would never be like it, it was going to be ever again. It was going to change. Hallelujah. So I, I walked up the stairs and, you know, went on with, with whatever we did that day. And then little did I know, but that moment, those stairs yes. actually changed me because not only did I use it later to make me stronger, I used it as a makeshift track. I would run up those stairs and use it as like a stair climber. And yes. I actually physically and emotionally was getting stronger in my house that I hated. And I, I just, Woo. I made it, you know, benefit me, even though it was like my darkest time. Yes. I, I did. I made that change. And I was like, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I can't. Yes. And so that, that would be the most pivotal moment. I would say that would be the one moment that really sticks out to me and mm. know that, that's when I knew that I would always be, you know, a person yes. who can make things a little bit stronger in my life, no matter what the situation is. You made that decision to become mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually stronger at your deepest, darkest moments. I love that pivotal moment in your life because it was the darkest. I always say that when you hit that rock bottom, like you just feel like you hit rock bottom, the lowest of lows, depressed, exhausted. No one's listening to me. I want to do this. No one's caring about my feelings. I just gave birth. But, but what about me? And when you collapse, that rock bottom became your solid foundation to build the new you. And that's what I love. You didn't let those chairs at that moment, those stairs beat you down. You actually made it build you up. Yes. And you kept that little glimmer in your eye, that little glint in your eye in the back of your head, knowing that every day you're going to get stronger. As you wrote in your book, in your chapter, that every day you're going to make it count. You're not going to be the victim. You're going to be victorious. You transformed that moment, which could have been very dark and depressing, and you could have only gotten down more. But no, right. you said, no, I'm not going to allow it to beat me up, eat me up alive. I'm going to be stronger from that. Right? Mm -hmm. So everyone out there listening, listen to Candy's story. Don't let your deepest, darkest moments eat you up and have the last say. You are stronger than that, wouldn't you say? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to go to the next question because this is getting so good. Who do you feel is your most influential person to inspire you on fitness lifestyle? Well, first and foremost, I would say you, Jennifer oh. Nicole Lee. <laughs> yes. Thank you. There is a, I think not only do we have one person, but I think that there's several people that influence you along your way. I don't know about you, but yes. for me, there's been several. You, of course, Thank helped you. me to, to get to where I needed to be. But also, I had my parents who were there for me. Yes. I had yes. my husband and my children. And then also, you know, the people that see you out there running, the other people who who are exercising, they give you that little small wave or that hello. Yes. <laughs> it, it really does. Yes. And you know what? That's very true. And that's why I believe that when you train around certain people, either there's that competitive spirit where they're judging you and it kind of brings you down or it's, there's no connection or there you have that environment of the people that nod, they support you, they're rooting you on. That's what I really am excited about. And I want to just thank you for being one of our VIP fitness sisters part of our sisterhood at jnlfitnessstudioonline.com. We love when we see you online. It's like 
you're so positive and then you're always doing your, your social media uploads, filming yourself because you know the importance of seeing other people work out, how it fuels your fire. It fans your flame. It creates a little flame into a glowing bonfire. So that is a beautiful, beautiful way to put it. And yeah, it's not like you have to be Miss Olympia winning all these titles and crowns to motivate people. You said your mom, your dad, your husband, your kids, the, the, the strangers in the park seeing you work out. That is amazing. I love this question. This is going to be really good. Everyone listen to this one. Um, what helped you during the most difficult times or moments when you just felt like giving up, giving in and just forget it? What helped you to move on? Yes, this one, I would say a big part whenever I'm sweating and just yeah. really ready to give up. I, music is a huge inspiration yes. for me. You have to have the right music going on and listening to it. If it's like a song that I don't want to hear, yep. that helps to bring me lower. I'm yes. not like getting excited about what I'm doing because I'm already like, oh my gosh, can I even move anymore? I'm sweating so much, you know? And then I don't have music and there's been times that I, you know, my iPod went dead or uh -huh. I forgot it or, you know, something uh -huh. like that. I, I hear you sometimes. Oh, <laughs> I thank do. you. Thank you. You hear my little j when yeah. I say never give up, believe you can do it. Let's go. Yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And then sometimes just like little funny remarks that you say when we're training, I hear them, you know? <laughs> and then I also hear like, I have a voice inside of me also. And you know, I, that voice comes out and it's like, you can do this. You yes. got this. You're going to be stronger tomorrow. Yes. It, it's like a bunch of things that happen. If I don't have my music, I just start, you know, thinking about all these things. And then sometimes I'll have that negative, you know, mm -hmm. response and I shut it down shut immediately. Shut it down. Yeah. Yes. And I say, you know, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm yes. too rad to be sad. You know, I try and just change it to something else and just get it out of here because I don't want the negativity. Yeah. You said something very important. That's a tool, tip and technique that everyone can do. So Candy, you recognize and you're aware and you're enlightened when that negative energy comes. You first of all, stop it in its tracks. You just recognize it and then you transform it. You flip it right on its head. When you start feeling depressed, you say, no, I'm too, I'm blessed to be stressed. I'm too rad. I'm too rad to be sad. You take that bull by the horns and you flip it right over on its back. And that's a strong woman. And that's what I love. And it's empowering women beat themselves up mentally, emotionally, physically, that inner self dialogue can be so negative. I always say, you know, don't create hell for yourself. You know, other people do that. Don't do it for yourself. They'll other, let the other people will. Don't worry. Be yeah. your own best friend, not your own worst enemy. So that's, those are great advice. And everyone is going to just grow so much from this podcast interview. And I have, um, I have another great question here for you. What is your go-to energy boosters? Oh, my energy boosters. Well, yes. after a out, I do try and have a smoothie and I add the organic chia seeds. The organic Ooh. chia seeds are wonderful. Yes. They provide a, a whole day's worth of energy if you take them. Ew. Good for your heart and everything. And then also if I need like a boost during the day, I take emergency, the vitamin emergency. Mm -hmm. And those mm -hmm. are like a, a powder substance and uh -huh. it just becomes a little fizzy drink. So it's like a treat for me. Yes. And it helps my skin to glow yes. and it helps me to, to replace everything that I've lost to replenish all the sweat that I've lost in the workout as well. So those so are my cute. two go-to energy boosters, which I love. Ah, well, it shows because you're glowing. Your glowing is so, we need sunglasses looking at you. You're <laughs> glowing so much. I love it. And last but not least, what is the best thing to working out for you personally? The best thing I would say would be when I'm at that moment where uh, my heart is racing, I'm sweating, and I feel like I just can't go anymore, and I'm fatigued. That's when I feel the most alive. Yes. When I'm at that moment where I feel like I can't do anymore and then my body is amazing and I actually get a second wind and, and I'm ready to go and I end up cleaning my house after the workout or right. you know, doing so much stuff. It, it does give me the energy that I need even though during that moment I feel I yes. feel alive in that moment because my heart's I can hear my own heart beating. I, yes. I'm sweating. 
And then afterwards, it's just like, I, I remember that moment. I'm like, you know, a, the body is such a wonderful thing. It's so it amazing is. how it can do or what it can do. Absolutely. I love what you said. I'd love to add on that. I always say, you know what, when you go to the store, you buy something for a dollar, you get that dollar thing. But when you go to a workout and you just give a little bit of energy, it gives you so much energy back. Yeah. And you have a boundless energy. And I love what you said because a lot of people out there listening are like, well, I'm just too exhausted to work out. What would you say to them? You, you need to work out then. You if you're do. too exhausted, <laughs> just work out because you'll get more energy. And I love what you said yeah. because you're a busy mom, busy wife. You're running around, carpool, shopping, organizing, taking care of your wellness. And when you take care of yourself and you exercise, you're able to have energy to clean your house, do more, go through your goal list. I mean, it is the greatest gift that you can give yourself. And going back to your story that's in this book, guys, I mean, you got to read this, her story, get the book, read chapter 13, Candy, Nicole Taylor, Sweet But Sugar Free. She is amazing, guys, because you're going to learn to never give up, always believe in yourself, and no matter how bad you have it, you were never in the hospital with dementia, didn't know who you were. So remember that. If if fitness can heal this amazing woman, just think what it can do for you. In closing, Candy, what would you like to leave with our 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 viewers to really give them that that just that inspiration, that motivation to pass that torch to them? Just remember that every day is a gift and you don't know what's gonna happen today or tomorrow. So use your time wisely and make the most of it and always find your joy. Woo! Oh my gosh, I gotta give you a round of applause. I've known you for years, but our friendship continues to grow and get better and deeper and I celebrate you. I am honored, let me just say this on a personal note, I'm honored to have angels like you in my life. I'm honored that God has been able to use my image, my, my motivation, my voice, to inspire you to be the most beautiful woman and wife and mom and, and, and daughter of God that you can be. And this is just the beginning for Candy Nicole Taylor. Where can people find you on your social media, dear, if they want to reconnect with you or maybe uh, reach out to you and thank you for your great story? Candy Nicole Taylor on Facebook mm -hmm. and then Candy N. Taylor on Instagram. I also do Snapchat as well. Yes, yes, and yes. all of that is on either, I, I do Twitter, Snapchat, yes. I do all of those yes, things. We, have, we want more of you, please. We want you everywhere. <laughs> well, dear, in closing, I want to thank you and just know that I believe in you. And guys, get the book, read Candy Nicole's entire story, Running to Remember. It will touch your heart in ways you never knew possible. With that being said, until next time, smile and be well. Bye-bye.